Hey everybody, this is Guy with Survive, and today we're going to talk about our move back to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and why we made that decision. But since this is closed today, I thought we had a really funny opportunity. Uh, everybody who's been following us since the beginning back in 2013, 2014, this is the building where it all started. Uh, this is our first shop. You can see in the old videos, uh, it looked a lot different, but now it's an awesome distillery and restaurant. Uh, this is Mason Dixon Distillery. So I'll just go by the bar really quick here and show you what this has turned into. And then we will continue over to our site, which is still kind of under construction, but we're almost wrapped up now. So uh, yeah, I guess Ellie, the desk used to be here. Yep. And we had grinding benches over here and different things. You can see in uh, the older videos what this used to look like. Um, if you come on one of their open days, they have great food here and a lot of different delicious liquors. Uh, they do all the brewing, or brewing, the distilling back there. I guess brewing too, that's the first step. But uh, they do all the distilling back there and barrel everything, bottle everything here. Uh, they use local produce as much as possible, so the food quality is really high. Um, so yeah, this is where Survive started, and now it's the Mason Dixon Distillery. Stop by if you're ever thirsty or hungry. So as we're leaving the distillery, where we started, this is our final form over here. Please forgive us. Uh, we're making great progress here, but it is still under construction a little bit. Um, by next week, we'll be 100% functional, even if things are a little weird inside. Uh, we still have to get a trash dumpster, uh, get some pallets hauled away and things like that, but the progress is progressing. So we should have a big opening door here soon. Uh, Gettysburg Construction looks like they're gonna do us a uh, four foot and a six foot that can open up so that we can have a normal man door, but then also be able to accept and uh, swap out equipment, large deliveries and things that are heading in and out of the building. So coming inside here. This is our stuff. Um, so we'll go through here in a second, but uh, if you stop by here, now we're at 345 East Water Street. Uh, you folks that used to stop by the old shop, this is an open shop as always. So come in anytime. You can see the stuff being made every day. Uh, we're always here and uh, we're just excited to really get back to work here and just to try out a new place. So this used to be falling apart. So what happened here, uh, big thanks to Zach Eckert and all the folks over at Spectrico for giving us this, this opportunity to get in this building and to Gettysburg Construction here for doing a good job. Uh, hopefully we get this done soon, but we've got two bathrooms now where there was a big pit in the floor, almost. Uh, should by tomorrow or so have the toilets and stuff run in here and have two bathrooms, so that's awesome. We now have water. We just about have power. So I was over in New Jersey yesterday. Uh, compared to the newer utilities in Boise, the power level is a bit different over here on the East Coast. Uh, Spectrico uses a lot of power. They've got their own little substation. So we're on 208 Y power at the Boise location. And now we've got a strong 240 volt D connection. Um, so I had to swap out our two transformers for one larger transformer that'll run the Blanchard grinder and the water jet. So as soon as we get that in here, we'll have those things up and running. But as you can see here, the utilities are all run. And we've just got to get this plumbed in here. So the talented folks over at Ketterman Electrical will be over here to get this wrapped up. Uh, huge thanks to Guy and the gang over there and to my buddy Zach who did all of our electrical drops. Uh, Zach Fontaine, awesome electrician. Ketterman, awesome electricians over there. Super happy with the work. Everything is appropriate now for all of our equipment. Um, up until now, everything's just been kind of reactionary with our company. And so we're excited to finally, we were able to lay out the shop how we wanted a little bit better here and make sure that everything is the way it should have been. Uh, this is our first step toward a more proactive business model. Uh, we know what we're doing now. We've gained some experience. We're a little more worldwide and now we're ready to come back here to Pennsylvania where it's the home of steel and uh, just makes a lot of sense for the business so uh, this is our permanent location 
So first and foremost, I just need to put out there, uh, we didn't just move on a whim. Uh, our old lease was up and we could not come to a new rate that worked for everybody for our old space. So they had a new tenant that was willing to pay the exorbitant amount for rent at the old location. So we had to get out of there. Uh, we got as far as we could on everything, but we had to drop everything where we were and get it packed up. Uh, all that decarburized stuff, we totally got all that stuff processed and coded. So as we get all that unpacked, we'll be having the rest of that available and getting those orders shipped out. Um, right now, real quickly, I wanted to talk about some of the struggles we had being in Boise with dealing with so many people on the East Coast. Uh, this Blanchard grinder was a huge source of contention for us. Uh, nobody in the Valley had really done Blanchard grinding. So when we got this, it was a new type of technology and we had to figure it out all out on our own. Uh, a big part of that were the grinding wheels themselves. Uh, these are produced by Jout and Rogers over in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So uh, when we were developing our grinding processes, uh, UPS managed to break three test wheels. So these are custom made to order. Uh, they take five to seven weeks on a rush plus shipping to get them here. And to have three of those break during development set us months and months behind. Uh, after speaking with the folks here, if we'd already been in Gettysburg, we could have gotten all this sourced out or sussed out in weeks, not months. Um, just having that proximity to that company and some of these other companies uh, is really gonna improve our communication where we can talk face to face and talk about expectations. And I think really just better understand where everybody's coming from to produce a better result. And with the proximity, we can just do that a lot more quickly. So uh, yeah, now that moving forward, we've got all the grinding figured out. We have a nice reliable source for wheels that I can drive over and get wheels in the morning. We have no shipping time uh, that we need to contend with. Those shipping expenses, uh, delays, possible breakage, uh, just eliminate all of that by being right here while all the work is. Um, I will be talking about the blades here in a second as we go over to those pallets. So we covered the Blanchard wheels and some of the struggles with being in Idaho where most of our suppliers are in Pennsylvania. Uh, that's not just stuff like wheels and consumables. Um, with regard to the latest decarburization issue of that new material Magna Cut, uh, we could have limited that a lot more if we would have been here. Uh, there's less incentive to save up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of blanks uh, to make a more efficient heat treat batch. Uh, now we can talk to everybody there face to face and tie in people from the steel companies if need be. Uh, they're all really close to Peter's heat treat now. So we can collaborate a lot better and I think figure things out a lot more quickly, but also avoid really extensive situations like we just had. Uh, we're just about worked through it now, but it would have been a lot better to just avoid that issue altogether. So by being here, we're going to be able to drive up little batches at a time and make sure that we don't have these tremendous issues that affect production so large. Um, so you can expect lots of Peter's heat treat videos of taking batches up and just going deeper into the heat treat process and you know the just showing you what quality means really. Uh, there's so many neat people around here that I'm excited to introduce you to. Uh, there's, I mean, Richter Precision, uh, several finishing companies, anodizing companies, uh, different steel companies, uh, Bowler and Udahome are here, um, you know, obviously Crucible, uh, just so much that it, it's just too much to remember all at once. So unless I'm reading from notes, uh, we're just gonna find out in video today. But anyway, uh, the shop isn't really ready for public consumption right now, so I'm not gonna do too much of a, a tour yet, but uh, we should be able to do just a walk around and a tour and stuff next week, and just show you the flow of the, the whole new shop space. But um, in addition to having much lower rent, um, this space is going to provide us a lot of opportunity for growth and expansion. Uh, we have three times the square footage here, and there's not really any reason we ever need to leave this space. So anything we're investing in here is just an investment in tomorrow. Uh, this is our manufacturing company now, and we just want to do the very best job possible for you guys without those delays. That wasn't ideal for anybody. Um, I, I don't sleep well at night with delays. Um, so it's obviously been our intention to reduce or eliminate that 
and just be able to maintain our pricing and our quality. So now that we're here, uh, it's definitely all possible. So we look forward to sharing this ne next chapter of survival with you. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you again soon.